past, a lot of elections have been suspect. Do you think that the rigging or the quote has been done at the tabulator level mostly? Most, in most cases, that's certainly what I have repeatedly yes. said. Yes, you can hack an individual voting machine, but that isn't where the frightening impacts are. It's, uh, it's manipulation in the transmission between, there's three layers. You have voting machines, you have consolidation at a county level tabulator or several tabulators within that county, and then you have further consolidation at the state level of each of those subgroups. So if you take Ohio, it is 88 counties. Some of those counties have multiple tabulators. If my memory is correct, it's about 170 total tabulators have to report them to the state. The manipulation that is most frightening is either A, a compromise at the tabulator level, or an intercept between the subtabulators and the master tabulator. And all of those are well-established and well-demonstrated hacks at a master level, but they're not particularly sophisticated. And then down at the individual voting machine level, yes, you have all kinds of failures, compromises, and errors that occur all the way down to that level. But my concerns are generally up in the network, but I'm a network engineer, so that's what I think about. Um, now, with the, uh, the tabulation, it seems, as you've said in the past, that most of these elections have fallen in favor of the GOP. You by a shocking, by a, a shockingly bizarre percentage, whenever the exit polls seem to be wildly at odds with the outcome, it seems to always favor the GOP, which, you know, sometimes that's a candidate I supported, but frankly, I don't care if my candidate wins as much as I care about being in a democracy. Either I am or I am not in a country that elects its leaders. That's what I want. And if my party is elected, Great. And if my party is not elected, great. I still live in a democracy. Okay. So based on your expertise uh, and your experience, um, why do you think that's happening? Because people are fraud in the system. If the statistics that you saw and regularly see in outcomes of wildly variable, like the famous Connolly anomaly in Ohio 2004, that statistical anomaly, which is, as several statisticians have studied, mathematically into the multi-millions to one possibility, anomalies at one-tenth of that process in the credit card space mm -hmm. instantaneously launch an investigation. So we know somebody's playing with the numbers. They're stealing something or forcing balances. It's like when you see those kind of absurd results, where you can tell mathematically things are out of whack. Either something failed or something was defrauded. They don't happen. So, so the, there's no way that what you have seen in previous elections could happen by accident. I don't believe it. And you're saying that if something like that did happen and you were an elections official or a secretary of state, what would you, what would you do? Arrest people. So, do you believe that there should be a criminal investigation yes. based on, on yes. what's happened in the past? Yes. Okay. I've been very upfront about this for a while. I personally think that Georgia in 2002, the Senate race was stolen. I think Ohio was stolen in, in 2004. How do you think Ohio was stolen in 2004? In the tabular In the tabular level. The Connolly anomaly is just impossible. And if you look, it was brilliantly done. It appears what's known as a force balancing equation is incoming heavily Democratic precincts reported how much Kerry was ahead in those precincts. A number of counties would then flip the number, total number of voters ended up being probably nearly correct or approximately correct. But basically they would just flip Bush and Kerry votes, but only in the place that Bush was already winning. So a place that Bush would have won by 54 or 56% against of winning by 66% or 67%. Meanwhile, a bizarre down ballot event, you have this woman seven pages into the ballot who never campaigned in southern Ohio, who never assumed a, a, a black Democrat from Cleveland, ends up getting more votes than Kerry does. Because they weren't flipping her votes, so a person who voted a straight Democratic ticket, that number that she has, I just simply don't believe there are literally tens of thousands of Bush voters in southern Ohio who also wanted to support an extremely liberal black judge from Cleveland. It just 
boggles the mind that these two numbers would line up. 